Okay, so let's start the webinar. Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for joining this webinar with us today. The, the topic today for this webinar is Streamline the Day to Day with IT Automation. It's a webinar that I personally love. You will see it. It's, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of content. And also we try to include also three live mini demos okay so because it's an IT webinar and I think we most mostly in IT we all agree that we prefer demos to see software to see technology than to see too much powerpoint okay? so we try to do that and uh, basically before starting so we are giving one minute to the people that is connecting right now let me start with a real story and that said like this no it's a, it's a guy that said i have automated most of my job and now i only need one hour per week to really do what i'm supposed to do no to cover my, my job to make my goals i just need to work one hour per week and he's asking himself should i tell my boss and it's kind of the funny thing of this is that my said this, this is a news for, that i got from a magazine but i found at least three cases very similar to this in real companies while working with them. And basically these kind of situations will be happening today more and more with several of the new technologies that we have for automating. Today we are going to see one of the technologies that it's the, the one that was being used for by this guy, okay? So something funny, uh, maybe it happens to some of you someday. Let's start with the, with the introductions. Myself, I'm Joan Blanc. My role, I'm working, my title is pre-sales program manager. I'm working basically uh, with customers, with companies, helping them defining automation strategies. So basically working on defining processes, projects, analyzing processes, define automation, which is the best solution for you. This is my day-to-day my -day work. Today with us, we have Roger Hammer. Roger, how are you doing? Yes, thank you. I'm Roger Hammer. Director of Software Development Services for CM First Group. Uh, I manage both our product development and also our services, uh, and I lead many of those services projects as a project manager, and also do quite a bit with the Automate product, as we'll talk about today. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Roger. Happy to have you here. Very quick introduction about our companies, myself, uh, I'm working at Help Systems today. You will see because of my accent, I'm located in Barcelona in Spain. So I'm working in Help Systems in one of the Help Systems offices in Europe. And basically what we do at Help Systems, we develop, we create solutions, software solutions in two big areas, automation, cybersecurity. We are growing both a lot. We have a very, very interesting and powerful portfolio today. Today, this webinar will be very focused on the automation part and we will be showing the benefits, the use cases, what are the technologies and on the different of these solutions, RPA, robotic process automation, workload automation, managed file transfer. We will be talking a little bit about this today. Also for you to know, we are very, very strong and growing on cybersecurity with different solutions and data classification, data loss prevention, identity management, and more, okay, that are, of course, outside the scope of this webinar today. Roger, if you want to introduce a little bit, what do you do? Sure, CM First Group is headquartered in Austin, Texas. Uh, we have a number of partners, including Broadcom CA, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, CA Flex and, and CA 2E today, which are key products that many of our customers use. Uh, also partnered with IBM and, of course, Help Systems. And we have a number of customers over the last uh, 10, 11 years that we've been uh, working with to both do uh, modernization and also services uh, to help day-to-day -day development and, of course, automation using uh, Automate RPA. Fantastic. So and this is a little bit the agenda for today. There is a lot of content. There's a lot of content that we are going to cover today. Today, our objective of Roger and myself is to give you a high level overview on different technologies, but focusing on benefits, on use cases, on real scenarios. And also what we will do during this web then during this webinar, it's four demos. Three will be live, another one will be a quick video. So we can also see 
the technology and it's not only a powerpoint that we, what we see what we see today okay before starting we, the agenda will cover workload automation managed file transfer rpa robotic process automation and then roger will will explain a little bit some use cases of rpa for ca2e and cplex auto automation let's start before starting let me give me one second i will send a poll the idea of this is kind of to share the results on what you say about if your companies today using any of these technologies that we are going to see today thanks for participating in this poll the idea is to share a little bit the rate of adoption of these technologies in the companies today and let's see if the results is what we expect I see the partial results. It's more or less what I expect. So thank you very much for participating. I will close the poll and share the results. Thank you very much. And I'm sharing. So you should see. I see that screen very small. Give me one second. Number one, workload automation. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. Workload automation, it's the technology of the three technologies that we are going to see today that has been more years in the market. It's been in the market since the 80s, if I'm not wrong. Also, Help Systems first product, that the first product that we started developing at Help Systems was a job scheduler. So we know this very well. And then RPA, it's maybe the latest one to arrive into the market. So it's still in a process of adoption. So very interesting. Thank you very much for, for participating on this. Let me and uh, now i will hide the poll thank you very much so let's start workload automation for those who do not know the what is workload automation basically today again remember this is a very very high level overview on the technology and what it is we are not going to enter into lots of details today but i want to remember to you there is we will leave some minutes at the end of this webinar to to so you can make your questions and we will try to respond as many as, as we can at the end during five, 10 minutes at the, at the end. Feel free to write your questions during the webinar and we will cover the, those at the end. Okay. Okay. So what is World of Automation, also known as Enterprise Job Scheduling? So basically it is a technology, it's an application that controls the unattended execution of other programs. Okay. It has several names in the market. It's better known as a scheduler. No? So do you have a scheduler? This is the most known name maybe, but it has different names, work with automation, enterprise of scheduling, scheduler, and so on, okay? So basically this is the idea, no? And if you see the background of this slide, basically it represents the cows. <laughs> no, it's good. Sometimes when I share this slide with a customer, with a company, they typically say, no, no, our processes are more complex than what you have in this slide, no? And this is a little bit the idea, no? So today, applications, we, 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 IT has changed a lot during the last 10, 15, 20 years, no? Where we had monolithic systems, very big mainframes, IBM IIs, and today everything is distributed. We have lots of complexity, no? But at the end, we have lots of processes that are multi-platform, multi-application, information that we have to move. At the end, a job scheduler is a software that aims to control all this complexity. So basically, what are the benefits of implementing a job scheduler? Basically, what companies are looking for is to simplify this volume management. No? So instead of having cron tabs, instead of having scheduled tasks in Windows, instead of having millions of scripts in multiple systems, normally a job scheduler makes a lot of sense when a company has hundreds, thousands of different jobs in different systems, in different applications that are that need to be executed and if you don't have a central piece of software that is controlling orchestrating all these executions it's very very complex to maintain to detect an error to react to fix a problem soon so basically our customers are looking for simplifying this management decrease the number of errors detect the problems as soon as possible and automating it and the, the resolution to those problems automatically no? so if we try to explain that with a simple example, uh, let's take this example of process. It's, it would be a very typical sales consolidation process. No? So imagine we have several branches selling things. 
that are generating several files daily and we have to run a process that consists on generating these files. These files have to be sent, received, consolidated, integrated into the ERP, run a process to make a stock calculation, send this information into the warehouse, run an ETL, insert information in the warehouse, generate reporting, and so on. Okay, so very typical process, very simplified. It's a very simplified process. But of course, what we have typically in process like this, it's deadlines. No? So look at this 7 a.m. Normally what we expect or someone from business will expect is that this process finishes before a deadline because we need this information to do something, for instance, the next day. So if we take a closer look at this process and we try to understand how these processes are managed today, we will find different pieces, different problems. One is that most of these small things that we have to run are scripts, are small programs, are custom developments, are Python, it's a PowerShell, it's a whatever shell script. And with the scripting, we have the problem that they are hard to maintain. If something fails, it's very hard to know that that specific script failed. What was the problem? No, at the end, maybe we realize that we don't have the information in the warehouse application, but to diagnose where something failed, we have to take a look at everything. Okay, so one thing, scripting, non-centralized scripting. And on the other side, we have dependencies and time constraints. No? So probably we have different pieces, different programs, different executions that have to happen in an order and there are dependencies because one job will generate files or information that will be picked by the next one. And basically, typically a customer that is not using a job scheduler, the way we are managing the those dependencies are time-based. No? It's kind of creating rules and say, okay, I assume these files will be ready 2 a.m. So I will run a process in here 3 a.m. just in case it takes a little bit more. And this I will run 4 a.m. just in case. Okay, but this is absolutely non efficient. Okay. So basically, with a job scheduler, companies look to optimize also the process. You know, we optimize the process because they are monitored, because we have everything centralized, because any problem that happens during the execution, we see, we detect, we correct, we retry automatically, but also because it gives a lot of visibility in the processes. You know? It helps a lot to analyze what's happening. If we put every single execution of any process that is happening in our company or core processes into a scheduler, at the end, what we have is visibility on everything that is happening in our company, and we can optimize those processes. For instance, understand which parts can be executed in parallel, which parts uh, we are waiting and there is no need to wait. Okay, so the idea is that after putting a scheduler, it's very easy to understand what's happening and make the process to be make the process more efficient, quicker to, to execute. This is we have lots of customers where this is very 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 sensitive very critical especially the ones that are running heavy nightly batch processes where there are strong deadlines no? i will explain a, a, a real example on that so this is one of the main benefits of of a scheduler and let's uh, see a real story this is access story it's a company it's um, selling cons consumer loans it's a customer, I cannot give the name, of course, but it's a, it's a consumer loans company that has more than 180 stores in, in malls and shopping centers from where they give instant loans to consumers, like for me, if I want to buy a new big TV for my home, okay? So basically they had a very, very critical nightly batch process that consisted on, on updating all the loans prices for all the stores and distribute all those prices to all the stores. So it's a super critical batch process because it's updating these prices and there is a business rule, they cannot open the stores, they cannot give loans without updated prices. Okay? So basically a failure in the process results in stores not being able to open. And this is very typical. What was the project trigger in this case? It was basically that they had an incident in that process that delayed the execution time of, the, of that process just three hours. It, it might not seem a lot, no? but the process was delayed three hours. That meant that all the stores, 180 stores, not being able to open to sell during three hours because a batch process failed during the night. The reason was a manual problem. 
it was a batch process that was not fully automated, IT operations. The, the IT operator had to do several manual tasks during the night, and he did a mistake. We are human, we do mistakes. So that manual mistake make made the process fail, okay? So, and then it's very typical, no, that when a critical problem like this happens, it's business requiring IT in this case to automate and control the process. No? Normally, and this is said, and it's true in IT yet today, no, sometimes to have investment on a technology, we need kind of a big problem to happen, and then the, the company you know, realizes on, on how important it is to have this under control. That was the, the case in this in this company. Then it was business saying, hey, we have to automate and make this process very strong. This cannot fail. It's critical to our business. Okay. And the return of investment of this project, it's avoid another problem. It's a, it's as is no. It's a, you don't want this this process to fail. No. So for the company, it was very very important. The cost of a problem in this batch one day, it's bigger. It's more than all the cost of implementing a scheduler for them. So in this, this case, we don't have a ROI calculated as a number, you know, because it, it's very difficult, because in this case, what they are looking for is to avoid another problem. And of course, they are saving a lot of manual, a lot of time on manual tasks that we are done by, by operators manually. Okay. Okay, so let's time for the first demo. Okay. This is not a real demo. I will open uh, one of uh, I will open Jams. Jams is one of our job scalers, okay. And I will do a very, very, very light, high-level demo just to show you a little bit the look and feel, so you understand. I think it's better to see something working even if it's very basic, okay, than just a PowerPoint. And this is the idea, but don't take it as a full demo. It, I will just scratch one, less than one percent of the features of what we can do in in here. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the central console where the IT operations team will be monitoring, looking at the executions, this list, it's what we call the monitor. It's basically every execution that is happening real time, everything that was executed, it's here. Okay, so we have centralized visibility on everything that is being executed on multiple and hundreds of systems. And the way this works, it's, mm, First thing we have to do, normally it's to deploy an agent. So we install an agent on each operating system. Of course, we provide agents for most of the platforms that we may need. No? So we have lots of different types of agents for the different platforms. No? So in here, we have agents for Windows, Linux, AS400, ZOS, no? Mainframe, AX, Unix, and so on. And we deploy an agent, we install a local, a local agent in that remote system, or we can do remote executions also, depending on the technology. And that would be the number one thing that we do. Next thing we will do is to define which are the jobs that we want to run. Today, I will show you something very, very, very basic. I have a billing batch process example that we have where we define several jobs. If I let me show you very quickly, if I create a job, again, here we will have hundreds of types of jobs that we can run from here. This is what we call execution methods. These are some examples. Of course, this can be expanded. We can add more execution methods, but just for you to see very quickly, no typical execution method that we will execute. It's a command, operating system command, a bat file, a shell file transfers, uh, AS400, ODDCs, SQL agent, and so on, Visual Basic Script, we can run PowerShells, Unix scripts. Okay, so there are a number of technologies that we can integrate with when we create a job. But in this case, I will just show you how a job that is already created, which is very basic, it's just doing a ping. Okay, it's doing nothing very simple example. This is what this job will be doing, just executing a script, a command. And a job has a number of properties on scheduling, if I want to run this job on a schedule after another job, no, we can define any kind of complex logic to map the different dependencies on executions. And then we can create, for instance, what we call a sequence, which is a graphical representation on dependencies on the different jobs that we want to run. This is a very simple example of a sequence of jobs some of the executions will be in parallel, some of them will be sequential. Okay, so what I will do right now is to launch this. 
Look at this, I will submit this sequence. Okay, so it's going to be executed real time. So if I go to monitor, you will see first line, it's running. If I double click this, we can see lots of details. We have the log file, we can refresh real time. And I can see the sequence that will show us real time. You will see green boxes, it's that it's executed or being executed. And this is updated real time, now it's executing still finishing the consolidated data, now it's calculating job, and then it will finish. Also real time, you can update the logs and have everything centralized, okay? Okay, so that was very light, very, very light demo, so at least you can get, a, you can see the look and feel on, on what we do with the schedule, okay? We define these jobs, orchestrate these jobs, and launch them, and have everything controlled from a central, central console. Okay, before continuing, another quick quick question. Let me launch the poll. Again, the idea is to share the results and see how do you think your company is very automated, not very automated. I will wait for some seconds for your responses. I see a lot of people replying. Very good. One of the options is 0% by the moment. Okay, I will close the poll. Thanks for participating. Let me share the results so you can see. Okay, so most of us, you, most of you consider that your company is normal. You, you are automating process right now. At the end, we have someone that said that it's very low. Low. Okay, so most of you, you think your company is normal, so you started automating. You have probably started or implemented several technologies or improved processes, so you are more and more automated. And just 18% of the participants on the poll said that you consider that your company is very highly automated. No? So it's still a lot of room to improve. Thanks again for participating. And Turn for the next one. Okay, so we are going to see a little bit the same idea. Very quick overview on what is managed file transfer. And again, a little very, very quick demo on, on, on it. So what is managed file transfer? It's another automation technology. The name itself uh, gives us a clue on what we, this will do. So basically, if we take the file transfer approach historically, basically file transfer means sharing files with others. They can be inside our company or with external companies, of course. And the typical approaches of, of the file transfers has been batch, you know, so basically scripts, programs, FTPs, and so on. Let's say an attended or uh, yeah, batch, machine to machine, let's say exchanges of information. And then we have users and we, the persons, we normally use email, cloud platforms also to exchange files with others. This is the, the standard, the typical file transfer approach. What is managed file transfer providing on top of that? So managed file transfer is basically this file transfer at some layers of automation, encryption, security, auditing, and compliance. No? Basically, a managed file transfer solution has to provide all these five things you know, so to be considered a managed file transfer solution. And that will be the critical, the critical things. Basically, which, which are the main use cases? What are companies looking to solve? with a managed file transfer solution. This, in my opinion, it's number one use case. It's a very similar to what we have seen with scheduling. It's to orchestrate the processes. But normally it's on processes that are very, very, very focused on files and information exchange. Most of our customers on managed file transfer, the starting point was that they had custom systems that they developed in-house for years, legacy systems. That is what is being used to exchange information, files, and basically there are some challenges on that systems today. Some of them are how to guarantee, for instance, file delivery. You know, we want to be sure that a file has been delivered. I also I, sometimes I explain a case from a bank that the trigger of the project was that they lost one file. It was a file. It was a file to execute a Swift transaction to move four million euros. From one account to another account, it just was it's just one file. But this file was lost because the systems were so complex. This file has to be moved across 
15 different systems to execute the transaction and it was lost. It was just one file. But that means 4 million euros not moving. You know? So that was when companies cannot afford, cannot allow to lose one single file, okay, they normally need a management transfer solution. So basically, orchestrate processes, uh, let's say replace the custom developments to something standardized, okay, and reduce support costs. But it's not only moving files. No one may think of managed file transfer solutions like a solution to do FTPs or copy files. Yes, of course, managed file transfer solutions do this, but it's not only this. We can, with a managed file transfer solution, we can automate any kind of information workflow. That can be, of course, file transfers, FTPs, SFTP, FTPS, of course, but also EDI, AS2, AS3, transform, manipulate XML, JSON, connect with web services, execute REST, SOAP, web services calls, databases, and any, any cloud platform, OneDrive, SharePoint, AWS, Azure, Blobs, AWS, S3, and so on. So we have with the different solutions and mostly any management file transfer solution in the market have today multiple connectors okay so it's not only moving one file from one place to another or doing ftps which was kind of a typical approach of file transfer but to connect with any hybrid platform that we can have on prem in cloud and so on okay and that would be second most common use case for implementing a managed file transfer. When managed file transfer, we find something that I, I like personally. It's kind of sometimes the the ones that want to implement a managed file transfer, it's IT, it's normally IT operations departments that are the ones that have lots of hours to fix, diagnose, improve processes, be sure that the files are delivered. But 50% of the times it's security department that needs to improve and needs to be compliant with any regulation, okay? So we have lots and lots of cases where a managed file transfer solution has been implemented together, security and IT operations, because it was solving problems for both departments. Okay, so this is very important use case also for a managed file transfer solution. No? So to be able to encrypt any the data at any point, to have super powerful auditing information, reportings on everything, this is very, very important. Also. But more use cases on MFT. Uh, another one would be if we need to enable, to create a way so our partners can exchange information with us. No? So kind of a an SFTP server, an HTTPS, a web service, a portal. So a partner from us, a customer can send files to us or we can send files to them. Okay. So very important use case also. End-to-end -end security, very important in management transfer solution. It's not only encryption, but of course, but also antivirus, data loss prevention, analyze the data, assure data integrity you know we want to be sure that a file that is being sent from here to another continent when it's received it's the same file not an altered and that no one could access that file okay and also very very important compliant architecture you know? we can with mft solutions deploy any security that complies and meets okay with any any security requirement for sure, we have super powerful architectures to comply with any security requirement because it's one of the critical things in an MFT solution. And then another use case, it's a different one from the, from the rest that we have seen, but very important one in some sectors like media, for instance, accelerate exchange of huge volume of data. No? So if we need to exchange information terabytes between continents, we need probably something that allows us to reduce the time that we need to exchange these files. And we can we can send a file that in FTP maybe it needs two hours, and we have protocols that maybe we can send the same file within one minute. You know? So two hours versus one minute. So very specific use case, but very important in some in some verticals. And last use case would be user to user exchange of information. You know? So we need the persons, you no, know, we need to send files and share files with other people. So at the end, the ways we normally do, unless we have another way to do it, it's emails or 
cloud platforms where we can upload and share information, but lots of companies are very worried, very concerned about that, and they need to provide a very secure way so the users can exchange information between them, okay? So this is something that we can also provide with MFT solutions. Roger? Yes, thanks. So we wanted to share an example from a customer that we worked with here in a managed file transfer. And so let's say that you have a process to send transactions to a trading partner. Uh, maybe it's a report of daily transactions. Uh, this might originate in the IBMI uh, application data or perhaps uh, by a reporting package like Crystal Report you see there. Um, it could be, of course, a combination of the both. Uh, rather than a human sending the report manually, uh, the managed file transfer can initiate that, encrypt it, uh, and securely send those files to the trading partner. Uh, you can also automate the exception process to a large degree, uh, that which is what we've done here in this customer case. So we monitor and parse the process from the partner, and when there's an error, uh, that is then messaged by Slack or Teams, so it can be immediately uh, attended to. And then, of course, could also uh, report a help desk ticket. Um, this uh, particular scenario is very much paying off for our customer and uh, really saving them significant amounts of time. And the uh, humans in the process are really only dealing now with the exceptions rather than the entire process. Fantastic, thank you, Roger. <clears throat> and to finish this part, kind of uh, very quickly, a real story on a customer. This is a very big bank, very, very big bank. It's one of the top five banks worldwide that is using an NFT solution from us. And basically, just explaining this case because it's the most typical case maybe we have on MFT, no? Initial situation, the bank was kept. It's a homemade solution to exchange files based on scripts and custom developments that they did. And what they were doing is to transfer 400,000 files daily across worldwide. Okay? So it's a lot of files. Imagine when, before I was explaining to you, no, you, you don't want to lose one single file. So if you are moving this amount of files daily, it's very easy that you lose one file. So basically, they had no central visibility. They had errors happening often. Because this is normal. Moving that amount of information, you will have errors for sure. So the main problem that we are having is high diagnostic and resolution time. So every time a file was lost, a lot of time to investigate where that file is right now. No? Also, of course, they are moving very sensitive data and multiple security regulations we are play, applying to these file transfers. So basically, the most important outcome on this is how SLAs were increased. You know? So how the transfers, the exchanges of information were very solid after implementing the software and the incidence resolution time has been reduced by 80 percent but then of course if we look at the number of hours that has been saved by IT operations teams it's hundreds and hundreds of hours monthly of time to diagnose and fix any problem on the file transfers okay so very quick very very quick demo this is this slide is, is showing you three of the managed file transfer solutions that we have in at Help Systems in our portfolio. So we are very, very strong. We have a lot of knowledge and we have faced millions of different situations. Today, I'm going to quickly, very quickly show you go anywhere. But again, my apologies, it's not a real full demo. Okay, it's just a very quick preview. So you can at least have. Uh, High level overview on, on this. So I'm logging in, my go anywhere, you see web interface. This is the administrator portal from where we define anything that we need to configure. And I will basically show you two things. So I will show you again less than 1% of the pictures. It's not the idea of today, just to show you a little bit the, the overview. So, first thing inbound services. First thing I want to show you today is inbound services. No? So we have a platform where we can enable different listeners, different services that will accept incoming connections like SFTP, HTTPS, and others. When we define these services, look at this, I have SFTP started. We can define users that will be able to connect to these services. So in this case, I will be showing you a demo user for myself, okay, that 
Uh, we have millions of options that, of course, I will not explain today. Okay, every user can be authenticated locally or integrated with LDAP, Active Directory, and other sources. We can define lots of options on how the user will be authenticated. Double factor authentication if it connects through the web interface, if it's connecting through SFTP, if it will use a key, a password, both. Okay, so multiple options that I'm not showing today, okay? But very quickly, I just have an SFTP started with my user and I will just connect to show you. This is WinSCP, it, it's a FTP client I will use to connect to my SFTP, okay? So I'm connected to go anywhere SFTP with my, with my user. For the same information, let me very quickly show you. I can access using a web interface that can be customized. I'm a, connecting using exactly the same username, just to very quickly show you that the same files and information that I can access using an SFTP client, okay, can be accessed through a website that is with a full secure architecture that can be published to internet securely, okay? So I, exactly the same, the same information using this. So inbound services, number one thing I wanted to show you, number two, automations, the workflows, this is, if you remember the, the, the case of the big bank that uh, was moving 400,000 files daily, this is how they did. So what we will do here to define the automations, it's basically create what we call workflows, that it's uh, kind of like a script that we will build, drag and drop several actions that we have in here, okay? So no time today to show you, we can do almost anything, database queries, translate information, read XMLs, read JSONs, iterate elements, file transfers, we support multiple protocols and everything it's very easy to build because it's drag and drop to build something like, like this. So it's like programming, but without programming, of course. Okay, so this example that I have in here, will I will run it. Let me show you a little bit what it will do. We have this folder in here, we have this SFTP here, and we have this workflow in here. This workflow, what the workflow will do is take the files in this folder, zip them, and send using SFTP to that system, okay? Which is a very, very typical workflow automating files, okay? Let me just run it. Okay, done. Look at this, the files have disappeared from here, not here anymore. They are in the send folder. And if I refresh the SFTP, okay, you will see compressed file and the current timestamp with a zip file that contains, of course, the file that we that we sent. Okay, this is an, an example of a very, very typical and simple workflow of you know, taking files from a folder, zipping them, SFTP, and also send a confirmation email if needed, say, hey, the files have been delivered. Okay, hope it makes sense. It was a very quick demo again. Okay, so at least you have seen a little bit the, the idea. Okay, so last piece of technology today, RPA, Robotic Process Automation. What is Robotic Process Automation? It's basically, a, it's the newest of the three technologies we are, we are showing today. It's more recent, let's say five, six, seven years ago, nobody was talking about RPA. It didn't exist the way it is today. And now we are in a moment where most of the companies, probably 70, 80% of companies are implementing or have RPA already implemented today, no? So basically what RPA does, it's automate manual tasks that are normally tedious, repetitive tasks using software robots, okay? So this is basically what automate will do. And these bots can be both attended or unattended. That means that can work together with a human. Maybe the process has kind of things that require intelligence, human intelligence in the middle of the process. So you can have a bot working together with you, or it can be unattended, which means that runs in the background in a virtual machine, not interacting with the user and does background processing of whatever it has to do, okay? Normally we will be looking to high return of investment on RPA process. And this is a very, very critical point that when I'm working with companies that are implementing RPA, it's something I, I insist a lot, you know, an RPA project, has to have a high return of investment at the beginning. So, no, so probably it, we are talking about a project that will deliver value in days or few weeks, not months. 
at least to start. No? And if it requires months to start delivering Bailey, then it probably means that the approach is not the good approach to RPA. Because RPA is a very, very pragmatical technology that consists on automating the processes as is, let's say, no? the way they are today. Okay? Typical things that the RPA bots will be able to do will be opening websites, navigate, download files, extract data from anywhere, from applications, from databases, from a website, interact with multiple applications at the same time, desktop applications also, move, move files, copy files, create reports, and an infinite list of things that we'll be able to do. Hopefully you will see that in a demo. But if we focus on IT, because RPA is a technology that is widely implemented in business or by business departments, most of the RPA projects are led by a business department that has problems that want to solve. Okay, and we see lots and lots of cases where IT cannot take advantage of having an RPA solution and they say, no, this is a business project, it's not for IT. Okay, but there are lots and lots of tasks that we see that can be automated in IT. And these are some of the most relevant examples. Again, we will find hundreds and hundreds of different things that can be automated, but kind of very typical ones could be, for instance, reporting. No? In every in every IT department in the world, probably, there is someone building a report, building an Excel, an SLA report, incidents report. No? So this is a very typical task that can be automated, probably. Where else, for instance, application testing. We have customers using RPA to test applications, monitoring. This one is very typical also. No? You can use bots, RPA robots, to open up uh, an online banking, log in, make four clicks, <clears throat> and measure that everything is working fine and the response time is good. No? So use it as a monitoring tool also. So desk and service desk, this is also very, very typical. No? So for instance, solve some type of tickets. No? There, are, there will be some, time of, some types of requests that where the resolution will be always the same. So why don't we put a robot that does this? I know, for instance, reset a password. No? That could be a use case that maybe you always want to do exactly the same for a specific ticket. And the use cases could be infinite. Okay, Let me very quickly, because we are a little bit short on, on time and there is a lot of content today. Very quickly explain you a use case, a, 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 a customer case. It's Carter Bank and Trust. We, we have a, we have a more information on our website. If you are interested in knowing more on this, I will not enter into lots of details. But I want to highlight two things of this. One is look at the return of investment. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. It's a huge return of investment. No. Basically, this comes because there are typically lots of processes that can be automated, and that's that's a good thing. No, in in most IT IT departments, we find lots and lots and lots of things that can be automated, and when you start automating, happens this. No, look at this case; they have 75 bots in production. What happens with a project like Carter Bank and Trust is that day one, when you start a project on RPA, you don't expect the day one or the first week, you don't expect that you will have 70, 100, 150 bots. But this is what happens in most of our customers at the end, that you start with one, two, three critical processes. And in one year, when we talk again with the company, they say, now we have 100 bots today. No, and it's kind of lots of things that we discovered that could be automated that we didn't know the first day. Okay, so that would be for me one of the most important and interesting things because this is a common pattern. We have lots and lots of customers where this situation is common. Then these processes include anything that you can imagine. This is one of the examples. One of the processes was migrate information. This is a very good use case for, for RPA. No? Sometimes when we want to migrate application information from one application to another, of course, we can develop something, we can do it manually, and lots of times an RPA bot can do it very quickly. So it's a very, very good use case also. So very quick demo. It will be one minute of demo. Uh, I will show you our RPA solution automate, but again, very light demo. So let me start in here. What I defined in here, it's an example that what we'll do, this is a workflow. It's what we call a workflow. A workflow is basically high level representation of a process that can have multiple steps. This example will open Amazon, 
get iPhone prices, okay, build a report with that information, and then it would upload this to SharePoint, and if anything fails, open a ticket, okay? What I'm going to show you is I will double click this, I already have this open, and in here, it's, this is the interface where we develop the bots, you know, so you can see it's kind of the source code, if you will, of the, of the bot. But again, it's very easy to use. It's very powerful. So we have lots and lots of capabilities in here. The way it works is we have actions in the left. And if you if we want to do something like, for instance, move the mouse to a position on the screen, what I do is drag and drop and release where I want, like here and configure, which is the position where I want to move the mouse. Okay, you see this is moving. And if I press insert, I will capture the those coordinates okay this is the way we configure it's pretty simple we have 700 actions here to build scripts to do almost anything interact with excel copy files work with pdfs run programs open a terminal no so we can connect with a mainframe or an IBMI. we can open a web browser a chrome a firefox interact with it okay so very very powerful on this we can automate almost anything you can imagine but in this example i will just play it and um, so you can see i will I'm not doing anything with the bot executing right now. And what it's supposed to do, it's open Amazon, search iPhones, and generate a report with information of the prices. I will drink some water while the bot works for me. <laughs> okay, so you see, and uh, now it's clicking next page and it will, it will extract, I think it's three, four pages of Amazon. It's something that, of course, you can define. And by the way, this is a very typical example on, on, that we have in, in several customers that want to get prices from competitors or from partners or distributors and have kind of a report daily automatically generated in a folder, for instance. Okay, so pretty, pretty simple. I think it's clear what it does. So I will, I will stop it. Okay, in this example, we interactive with our web browser, clicking buttons, extract content, and also with an Excel file to write the data. Okay, so basically the bot was writing this information with the different prices from Amazon in this in this case. Okay, so Roger, all yours. Thank you. So we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, CAPLEX, CA2E, and uh, how uh, RPA is used in those areas, much like everything else, so it's not really different. Uh, but first, just kind of covering some of the different options for back-end automation, just being clear that everything doesn't uh, have to be back-end automation, doesn't have to be uh, run on its own. If you have small tasks that your users do, uh, then they can automate those also, and they can just execute those tasks. Maybe it's a, some kind of a data transfer, or something that interacts with their other steps that they need to make decisions uh, that are uh, not easily automatable, then we don't, you, know, you can do that to work also. And then of course, integrating between applications. We think this is a really important area uh, where you can access data or interact between applications and also using APIs and other kinds of integration tools. All right. So CA Plex, CA 2E, uh, I just say here, it's not about the business, or excuse me, it's not about the technology, it's about the business. So using these applications that you have in these model-driven environments, you know, and building bots that can drive different aspects of those applications can be great uh, examples where RPA can work. Uh, file and email, where you may have uh, a person working and receiving this information, adding it into an application, great uh, scenario for RPA. Uh, integrating between enterprise apps, obviously uh, Zendesk, Salesforce, Zoho, we use Zoho. So integrating those applications with other uh, internal applications or processes to move data in and out of them, great scenario. And as I mentioned, employee assisted or fully automated are both options and then uh, as I said, supporting your users with macro-like bots to kind of provide that higher accuracy, faster process is a, a big value. So as an integration tool, I think RPA is a great uh, capability 
basically reading and writing data either directly from a database or from the application UI, uh, from one application to another, integrating through APIs, connecting these different uh, systems, uh, you know, as your users accomplish their work. Uh, the key thing is it's really, you know, it's not like coding, right? It's drag and drop. So integrating these different projects can be very quick to do. Uh, and then of course you can create the automation for the integration and, and really it becomes a painless process. Um, fully automated, human and bot working together, all great scenarios depending on your specific needs and the ROIs that you can get individually. So we're gonna do a quick video here. I've got three scenarios of uh, RPA running in uh, CA2E and CA Plex. So there's a series of steps that are outlined here. This first one is a Plex C++ application. And so it's gonna work through and read an, a file from Excel. Then it's gonna delete information from the small application. And then you can see the file dropped in place and it's gonna rec <clears throat> excuse me, recognize that file, uh, read it in and begin the process of deleting the information from this application. Now, when this application completes, it's also got an integration with Trello. So Trello is going to get a card there stating that this uh, step or this process is complete. So it's stepping through the deletion process, bringing up each record and deleting it in order here. Once that's complete, we'll see that uh, Trello card pop up here in just a moment. Also worth saying that there it is, the Trello cards up there, C++ application and the date it was created. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to a CA2E application. The process is gonna be similar, except in this case, it's gonna read the data and create new uh, records in that application. So again, it's gonna start with an Excel uh, file that's gonna be dropped into place. It could, could be coming from an email, could be an FTP file, could be a number of ways that file gets in place. Uh, but now it's gonna kick off the application, running in uh, 5250 window here, and interact with this application just as the user would. So you see those entries are going in from the RPA tool uh, very quickly and providing those inputs for the application entering the, the users uh, from that, that Excel file, getting them input into the application. Again, it's gonna finish by creating a Trello card. There we go, we've got a new CA2E card there. All right, and our last step here is gonna do CA Plex. This is gonna be a web application. And it's again, gonna be similar just showing all the different scenarios that you may have in your environment with a model-driven development. And so again, we're gonna read that file uh, and in the web application this time, uh, run the same series of steps, uh, creating new users in that particular application. So it's gonna bring up the web, start up the browser interface, and it's gonna log on, of course and get us into the application. It's gonna step through a series of menus, getting us into the location uh, of the application that we want to work in. You will see me actually pick this window up and move it because it's hiding that Trello area. And so key point here is, you know, it's, it's not getting lost just because that window moved. It knows, you know, where it's working within that window and keeping focus there to make sure the application is executing correctly. So reading our data in again. Taking a moment to enter the data. This is running in a debug when I recorded it. So it's a little slower than you would see otherwise. That way you can actually understand what's happening. And we'll run through that scenario a couple of more times, entering users. And it will finish again the same way. It's going to create a Trello card through the API integration that's provided in Automate and uh, 
really nice functionality to interact with other applications that have APIs. Last one, gonna enter that data for that person, get it added in, and then we'll see that Trello card pop up. And that will wrap up our demonstration. There we go. And there's our third new person information in the Trello card. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how working with CA2E and CA Plex is really no different than any other application. We just want to show you that RPA works great there too. Brilliant. Thanks. So last fall, we are finishing already. We will launch the late the last poll for you all. It's kind of after you have seen these technologies. Maybe some of them you are already new, maybe something was new for you. Now, in your in your opinion, what do you think it will fit better in your company? What do you think your company will get most benefit of implementing any of those technologies? So thank you. I see you are voting. I will close the poll. Thank you. And I will share again the results. Thank you very much for your responses. So let's see your responses a little bit. You should be seeing most of you. Number one, robotic process automation. This is something that it's what I expected, let's say. <laughs> I was right on this one because it's the newest. Probably workflow automation, it's, it's kind of what has been more years in the market and kind of most of the medium sized, big sized companies already have one maybe. But RPA is something still in expansion and has millions of possible use cases where it can, it can help. Thanks again for participating in the poll. So we are finishing very quick recap on what we have seen today. We have seen three technologies, workload automation. Remember, main problem we want to address with a batch with a scheduler, it's managing large volume of multi-platform jobs. Then we have seen RPA, robotic process automation. The main, lots of use cases for RPA, lots of use cases, but main use case could be pre in IT, in the case of IT, the IT stuff of doing manual tasks that can be automated. The thing is that now we can automate lots of things that we were not able to automate 10 years ago. No, so this is something quite new. And then we have seen MFT, managed file transfer. Remember again, the main use case for this is if we need to secure and automate critical information exchange. We cannot lose one file. That would be the main requirements for managed file transfer. Of course, this, today's webinar has been kind of very generic, high level, just to give you an overview. We, I think we shared lots of information with you today. Hope it's not too much. <laughs> Probably you need now some minutes to, to relax a little bit. So this is kind of a, a Typical overlap and unique features between them, no? Because there are lots of processes that can be automated with one, with another, with both. Okay, maybe this detail is outside of today's scope, of course. But maybe the message with this slide is also that we are here, Roger, ourselves, to help you if we, if you think of having a conversation with automation experts can be of any use for you. We are here. Feel free to reach us. We will be happy to, to engage with you. And um, we will have one, two minutes to read maybe some questions very quickly. We want to finish on time. So let's see if there are many questions that we can, we can respond. Good, there is a good one. There is a very thin line of the difference between RPA and workload automation. So can RPA replace workload automation tool? This is a very good question that would be probably, I would need to go back to this slide. So yes, in some cases, not always, I would say in my, my personal experience, I think uh, uh, RPA is very good on some use cases, which is basically automating front-end applications, automating also back-end processes. But when we are talking about automating 
thousands of jobs with dependencies, with multiple calendars, multiple countries, multiple logics, multiple platforms, definitely a workload automation solution, it's, it's a better fit to manage those specific requirements because that features like forecasting, performance analysis on executions, things like that, that are very, very useful to manage these job volume management dependencies. Okay, but it's a very, very good question. Another question, can we run different processes in the same server in the same time? Uh, I assume this question is for RPA, uh, but in any case, the response is yes in the three of them, in scheduling RPA and MFT. In RPA, it's the, the answer is yes, but if, in, let's say, the limitation would be that with a one single machine from where we are launching executions, we can just execute one execution at the same time that requires interactivity. So let's say if we need to move the mouse and make a click, in that case, we will need sequential execution in that computer, but we can put more bots, more agents to run executions in parallel in different desktops at the same time. Not sure if I replied to your question, but yeah, we can we can manage this and we can have multiple concurrent executions at the same time, but maybe we need multiple desktops to, to do those. Uh, I think we are on time. There are still some questions we I don't think we have time to reply today. Just wanted to thank you for joining today. Hope it was useful. Hope you find at least something on all this content that we shared with you today that was useful for you. And thank you very much for joining us. We are here. If we can help you in any way, feel free to reach. We will be, we will be happy. Have a nice day and see you soon. Yep. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, Roger, and thanks for joining. Bye-bye.